We're going to talk a little bit about the error you might get when you're booting up your router, a bad file magic number. A command boot flash, which allows us to choose a particular file and flash to boot to from ROM monitor mode. The TFTP download command, which allows us to load a new iOS with IP connectivity. And installing an iOS through the line console if you cannot establish IP connectivity using the X modem command. We'll also go over a couple little troubleshooting tips if you run into problems using TFTP download or the X modem command when you install through ROM monitor mode. Now when you're booting up your router and you get an error, bad file magic number, and the router takes you to ROM monitor mode. ROM monitor mode is like a safe mode for your router. There's two reasons you might get this error, bad file magic number. The first one is you've got something in flash, but there's more than one file in flash, and the first file is not a valid iOS. So what's happening is trying to load an invalid file as the input output system. That's the first problem you might run into. The second problem you might run into is the iOS in Flash itself is corrupted, Flash is corrupted, no longer working, or somebody went in and accidentally erased Flash, not a good idea to do, and the input output system is missing so the router can't load the operating system so it comes up to ROM monitor mode. Remember ROM monitor mode looks something like this and it's basically a safe mode for your router that you can go in and access and load an iOS and go and repair your router so it's like a safe mode let's take a look at what you're gonna do when you run into this problem here so again the iOS is there but there are m there's more than one file in flash and the router is trying to load the wrong file as the iOS since I don't have the appropriate version of ROM monitor on the router I have and my simulator doesn't have the appropriate version won't let me get into ROM monitor mode I just basically typed up an example of what it's going to look like and what you're going to want to do now the dir command basically is a listing command we can use this command to list what's in a particular area of the router so dir flash will show me what's in flash this is one of the first things I want to check if I get into raw monitor mode and I get that bad file magic number. Maybe the iOS is in flash, but there's another file it's trying to load. If I do a dir flash and I see the input output system in there and there's another file in there, I can go in and I can use the boot flash command. This guy right here. What this allows me to do is it allows me to go in and specify the file that's in flash that I want the router to boot to. Once I have specified the appropriate file in flash to boot to, the router will go ahead and try to load that file. And as long as it's a valid iOS, it'll go ahead and decompress the iOS, move it into RAM, and the router will load appropriately. Then I can go into flash and get rid of those bad files or I can use what's called a boot system command. Now a boot system command allows me to specify what file in flash I want to boot to. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring up my router and we'll go in and we'll take a look at these boot system commands. So we'll pretend that the router booted successfully. I loaded the iOS and if I want to I can go in and specify what file in flash I want to boot to. So the first thing I want to do is see what is in it, what is inside a flash. So I do show flash, see what's in there. Again, there might be more than one file as opposed to just the iOS. And then I can go in and specify, hey, this is the file in flash I want to boot to with this boot system command. Configure terminal, get into privilege or global mode, boot system question mark. Now what I can specify is a TFTP file name or URL uni uh, universal resource locator flash I can specify flash and then the file name in flash that I want to boot to so I could specify hey 
boot to this file name in Flash. So what I would do is I'd go boot system Flash, and I can just copy and paste this file name there. And then it will go ahead and boot to that particular file name. I can also boot to MOP, RCP, as well as a regular TFTP server. I just have to specify the file on the TFTP server, things like that. So there is more than one file in Flash, and I want to control which one my router is going to boot to. Then I can use this boot system command that is stored in the startup configuration. And that will go ahead and solve that problem. Or I can go in and try to clean those invalid files out of Flash. I've exited out of there and if there were additional files in Flash, if I did a show Flash and I see additional files in there that shouldn't be there, I can use the delete command. Do not erase Flash. Notice it says carriage returned. If you do this, it will erase the file system and get rid of everything in Flash. So I put no on that and basically your input output system will be gone. So it's always a good idea to make a backup of your operating system just in case. You don't want to erase Flash. Delete Flash is a different thing. I can go delete and then the file name in Flash to delete. I could if I wanted to store like the startup config or a running config in Flash if I wanted to have another backup of it. Not really recommended. But if I want copy, run, and then gave it a name, sample config, whatever, what would happen is since I didn't specify a valid location, what it does is it takes the running config and puts this sample config and puts it into Flash. So Flash load helper. On this particular router, it's actually got to reboot the router to be able to do this. More advanced or more modern routers, it doesn't have to do that. It'll actually just put it right into Flash. So if you type copy, run, running config, and then misspell startup config or something like that, what'll happen is, uh, let's say if I just do this, copy, running config, startup config, start p config, whatever. Um, that's why it's always a good idea to use the tab key instead of trying to type everything out yourself. So if I mistype something like startup config, it'll automatically just put it right into Flash. So you have to be careful of that because you can put additional files into Flash. Now, if those additional files do go into Flash, they will not be the first thing in Flash. So if I do a show Flash, the iOS that's there will be the first file and it'll still boot appropriately. Just in case, though, it's a good idea to be aware of additional files you might put into Flash. If you load a new iOS after those other files are put into Flash, you might run into some problems. And those boot system commands can be helpful. I've brought up my previous slide, and we just talked about if there were multiple files in Flash, things that you can do. Now I want to talk about when the iOS in Flash is corrupted or missing, what are we going to do? We boot up, we get to ROM monitor mode, what can we do at this point to get an input output system into the router when we can't really access TFTP servers, things like that very easily because the operating system isn't there to load. What I've done is I've gone in and downloaded a couple of samples since I can't really run these uh, from the router I have or through the simulator. What this is, is this is the TFTP download command. TFTP download. And this seems to be case sensitive when you're running it through the router. So TFTP download, lower case. What I do is, well in this situation, what's happening is we have no iOS and Flash or it's corrupt, so we need to run and load a new one. Certain model routers have this TFTP download command available. What I can do is, the first thing I would do is I would just type in help and see if it was there uh, in raw monitor mode. If TFTP downloads available, then I'm going to use that to load the new input output system. Set. SET right here. What this is going to do is it's going to show me these variables. I have to go in and configure these variables in raw monitor mode on the router so I can access a TFTP server 
to pull the input output system from and reprogram flash. So set will show me these variables. What's nice about this TFTP download shows me how to type these things in. It shows me variable name right here. This is what you want to key on. Variable name equals value. So this is actually what I would type in if I wanted to set an IP address up top here. IP underscore. Make it all caps. Everything's got to be the same. IP underscore address equals and I would give the router an IP address that's able to communicate with the TFTP server. So let me go in and look at that in my net map here. What you could do is if you had a router you needed to load, plug directly into the ethernet port on the router from your TFTP server or if you have a laptop put a TFTP server on it and plug directly into the ethernet port on the router. What you can do then is have an IP address on the TFTP server. So the TFTP server, I go in and check the IP, I have 172.16.1.2. So I'm, if I'm looking at the net map, this interface on the router, I'd give it an IP address of 172.16.1.1 instead of 172.16.1.2. An IP address that can communicate directly with the TFTP server. And what I would do is I would put that new input output system in the TFTP root and that way I can load it directly into the router with this TFTP download command. Let's go back and look at that a little bit further. So I'd put the IP address in then I go IP subnet mask and again it's got to be IP underscore subnet underscore mask. They show you all the variables you have to fill out down here. So this is where you see all your variables this shows you how to use those variables. Variable name, value. So it's variable name equals value. And again, it'll look just like this. IP subnet mask. IP default gateway. If I don't have to go through another broadcast domain like the picture I showed you, I'm directly connected to the TFTP server. So I got router connection directly to the TFTP server. I just put the router's IP address as a gateway. I just put its own IP as a gateway. I do that because, again, this variable has to be filled out. I specify the IP address of the TFTP server, 1.2. This is 1.1. And then the file name of the new input-output system that is stored in the TFTP root. And what I will do at that point, once you have all those variables configured, again, go in and type the set command. Make sure everything looks OK. And what you can do then is go in and just type in TFTP download. Once all your variables are set, at this point, at the prompt here, you just type in your TFTP download command and hit enter. If everything is configured correctly, if all these variables up here are configured correctly, it'll go ahead and run and start loading the input output system. If there's a problem, it won't. So you got to make sure to run that set command and verify all these variables. One other thing that you can check is if you're in there, let me bring up my simulator. Once you've set all those variables, the TFTP server should be able to ping the IP address you've set on the router. So make sure it can ping. If it can't, check the cabling, check your IPs again. But make sure once those variables are set, you can actually ping the router. Other things to check for is make sure your TFTP server is up. So if you run this TFTP download command, if you can actually read that, <laughs> uh, TFTP download, all lowercase. So once you run this command, and if it's not working, check your cabling, make sure the TFTP server is up. Make sure the TFTP file name is there in the TFTP root. Make sure you can ping, things like that. If, if one of those things is off, it's not going to work. So that's the TFTP download. Again, if it's available, TFTP download is a very useful tool. It's not available on all routers. And if it's not, you're going to have to load the input output system through the line console. So this is how we're going to do that. 
Again, I'm in RAW monitor mode. I don't have an iOS. And what happens in this situation, I've got my router. I've got the console port on the router that we connect up to through hyperterminal. And I have my computer through that line console connection. And I've got my hyperterminal open. So what can happen is I can store the iOS on my on my desktop if I want to and I can use what's called the X modem command to actually load the iOS through this console port. The only problem with that is it's going to be a little bit slower. The max speed I can get if you look down here 115,200 that's a lot slower than a 10 meg connection through ethernet. The first thing you want to do is in ROM monitor the confreg command. This changes our configuration register number. The configuration register number, again the default is 0x2102. This configuration register number controls how the router boots. Again this tells it to grab the first file in flash. This tells it to use the startup configuration. Other combinations of the numbers change the baud rate, change diagnostics, things like that. By default, our baud rate is 9600 bits per second. Very, very, very slow. So, first thing we want to do is change the baud rate. And that's what this confreg utility is going to allow us to do. We just type in confreg, gives us a summary, and it asks us if we wish to change the configuration and we're gonna say yes to that. Now all I have to do, the only thing I'm worried about is changing this baud rate down here where it says change console baud rate. I can read. Everything else I'm not worried about. So enable diagnostic mode. Everything that you see in here is in brackets. So the N is in brackets. That means all I have to do is hit enter. Keep hitting enter and the default is no, meaning I'm not going to change anything. Once I get to change console baud rate, I want to say yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select 7 here. So right now it's at 0, which is 9600. I specify 7. That ups it to 115,200. If you do not change the console baud rate, it will take you couple hours, an hour and a half to two and a half hours to load the iOS as opposed, as opposed to 20 to 30 minutes. If you're getting paid by the hour, maybe you don't want to change it, I don't know. But again, it will take you a lot longer if you don't up this baud rate. So remember to do that. Otherwise, it's going to take a couple hours. Once you've gone in and changed it, it'll ask me again. It gives me a summary. It says, do I want to change the configuration? If I like what I see, I see the new baud rate here. I'm going to say no, and that's going to tell me to reset or power cycle for new config to take effect. At this point, I am going to type in reset and hit enter, and it'll go ahead and reboot my system. Again, I haven't done anything but change the baud rate. So what I have to do is make a new hyperterminal connection. So if I'm connected through hyperterminal, what I'll do is I'll disconnect and I can actually go in to the properties and I can reconfigure my connection. So what I would do is I would change 9600 to 115,200. If I don't, I'm not going to see anything in hyperterminal. Settings on my hyperterminal have to match the settings, the settings for the speed on the line console on the back of the router. So I just select 115,200. And then I would be able to see things in here. Again, I would be in coming back up into ROM monitor mode. So once I reset it, let it reboot, come back into ROM monitor mode, change my baud rate on hyperterminal so I can see things, at that point I can go in and use the X modem command. So let's take a look at that X modem command. So I've brought up another sample here of the X modem command. If you want, you can just close your eyes and pretend that I'm on a real router. And this is what it's going to look like when we run X modem. So I've got ROM monitor, ROM on 2, and then all I have to do 
again, after changing the baud rate, unless I want it to take a couple hours, I type X modem and then the name of the file I'm going to load. And what's going to happen is it's going to say, don't start sending the program yet, blah, blah, blah. All existing data in boot flash will be lost. Not a big deal since the reason I'm doing this in the first place is because all the data in boot flash is lost. It says invoke this application only for disaster recovery. Do I want to continue? Just missing the UE right there. And then if I say yes, then it's going to go ahead and wait for the file. So it's really simple. I just put the iOS on my desktop and I actually just copy and paste the name of the input output system right here. I go X modem, paste, put the name of the file. And then what I do is when it's saying ready to receive file, it'll just sit there ticking away. I go to my hyper terminal and at the top here, just pretend that this says uh, ROM on and all that and waiting to receive file. I go transfer send file. I choose X modem. I browse to my desktop where I have the file. I don't actually have the file on my desktop. So I'd go to my desktop, pretend the file's there, select the file, and then I would hit, as soon as I saw the path in here to wherever the file is, doesn't matter, I hit send. And what'll happen is it'll go through and it'll start uploading the file. Again, it takes about 20 minutes to do this, 20 to 30 minutes depending on the size of the iOS. If you do not change your baud rate, it's going to go ahead and take close to a couple of hours. So again, once you've done this here, X modem, file name, blah, 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 yes, I want to do it, then you just use your hyper terminal and go transfer, send file, select your file, Make sure you put the protocol to X modem on there. So when you go transfer, send file, it starts off as Z modem by default. You're going to go X modem, browse your file, then hit send. That's it. So again, this is something to do when you try to boot your router and the iOS and flash is corrupt or it's just not there. We can use the X modem. We don't want to use this if the TFTP download command is available because the TFTP downloads much faster and it takes maybe 10 minutes versus a half an hour. I'd say even actually less than five minutes. So this is our third option. First option is boot system command if the iOS is there. Second option is TFTP download. Third option is X modem if the other two are not available. In this video on iOS recovery, we have talked about bad file magic number. Again, the error you're going to get when the iOS is gone. iOS install through the line console using X modem, TFTP download, boot flash. Again, in opposite order, you want to try this first, this second, this third. And I also went over some troubleshooting things, especially for TFTP download, such as IP connectivity you're going to test with ping, making sure your cabling is appropriate, you have the right file, things like that.